Welcome back. Uh, the SGX Nifty is down about eight points. Uh, the SGX Nifty is no longer as relevant as it used to be, but still, if, uh, you know, at least it's tracking the Asian markets, and that way, it's telling you that there's a bit of a sort of a no noted zone right now, even in in Asian markets. And SGX Nifty also reflecting that, perhaps. Ashwini Gujarat, Sudarshan Sukhani, and Mitesh Thakkar now join us. Uh, good morning, uh, Ashwini. What's the trade for you on the index Nifty and Bank Nifty? Well, good morning. I mean, no trade zone. There's always a trade. I mean, yesterday there were two trades, and anybody who took them will be profitable. Just don't expect, you know, trending moves because the trending moves in two days did what normally you would take eight, ten days to do. So that way, you know, broadly eleven five hundred, five twenty, and eleven. 580 600 these are two points from where the market tends to turn around so that's what you want to do instead of trying to get in early morning uh, you need uh, you know things to get uh, towards one side of the move and then take the other side i don't think even today you'll get a major uh, move major one sided move so the idea has to be that you take your 50 points on either side and then you move on and wait for the next day so my sense is again we'll be in choppy waters now again every day something will go up something will come down but uh, the market will tend to find support and resistance at fairly defined intervals yeah which is what i said ashwini that mm. no trade perhaps positionally but intraday you will get swings and that's what the market did so what are those levels uh, to watch out for then well yesterday's high and low uh, makes for those levels so uh, if you get closer to 600 uh, you need to sell and closer to uh, 11 uh, 500 you need to buy and uh, the idea is that basically short covering and cutting of long positions is what is working okay uh, well uh, thanks for that uh, sudarshan uh, good morning to you your trades uh, both on the nifty and nifty bank yeah good morning uh, see lata the markets are in a trading range within that range we have a mildly bullish stance that is because repeatedly 11500 is holding so at least for the time being till it holds this is support and if we can be see visible support then we want to buy against that support so the idea is to go long in the nifty and keep a stop at 11530 just above that there is a minor resist support at 530 so we won't even take the extra 30 points of risk so with a stop at 11530 consider buying and correctly this is a mild rally that we are looking at not a big uh, gain so there is resistance 11640 or whereabouts so all these numbers are always general so I expect some gains towards 640 whatever you get you take it and then get out only when the range breaks out 530 and 640 will a big move come but for today buy on a dip and exit towards 640 all right the nifty bank is a very different uh, sorry no, no go, go ahead, ahead. go the ahead nifty bank is a very yeah the, it's a very different story because it is now pushing against support at 30300 what happens if this support breaks and maybe it won't break but it will become choppy around those levels so i don't have a trade on the nifty bank Okay well there's some negative news coming in for Cummins as well Sandeep Sena has resigned as the managing director of Cummins with effect uh, from August um now remember he was appointed as an MD just in Feb of 2018 so he's really not just over a year and now his resignation has come through so that's perhaps have a knee jerk reaction on the stock but uh, Mitesh Thakkar also joins in um, Mitesh hi good morning do you think this 11500 level uh, on the index will hold the support level or do you think it could break and <coughs> what would the strategy be for today yeah good morning Uh, eventually, I think this 11450, 500 zone will break uh, on the downside. So there's a strong possibility of that. But what has happened is that with the last week's fall, I think you know we've been oversold and we're just trying to get some foothold around the support area. We oversold, we are hang, ha uh, hanging on to support area. So we are just chopping around in range. As long as 11650, 670 on the upside is not being crossed, I think the idea on the index would be to try and take more short positions close at about 11625, 650 zone. So I think near the upper end of the range, I would I would attempt shorting. We have uh, already bought some put options uh, when the index was last there, and we maintain that kind of outlook that uh, 11650, 670 might not be crossed in the short term. 
Having said that, uh, I think on the bank Nifty, uh, also I'm looking at a range trade, uh, 30,250 uh, about 30,800 and if it breaks 3250, then I think we'll uh, look at some shorting opportunities there as well. Okay. Should I cover my stocks? Uh, yes, please do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have uh, two buys and two sells. Uh, Aurobindo Pharma has broken up support of 580, 582. So sell with a very tight stop at 583. Look for a 560 kind of a target. And Aishal Motors is a, a negative chart, but I would want to see the stock price break 18,750. So below that shot with a stop at about uh, 18,950 for targets of around 18,100. And two buy calls, Sun Pharma, gap up and continuation and uh, good setup, uh, good setup on indicator chart suggests that there could be upside. So buy around 420. Keep a stop at 410, look for a 444 kind of target and NIT Tech, a conditional buy. The chart is good, but it needs to get past this 1355 where it's peaked out in the last few days. So if it breaks above that, buy with a stop at 1340 for targets of 1395. I'm a little surprised. You have a sell on iShare, not Ashok Leyland. What's the view, Mitesh? Uh, Ashok Leyland, see Lata, I think uh, the stock has you know, come down to very important support levels of 80 and uh, last time also it was here. About uh, in Feb March, I think the stock had bottomed out. So on time and again, you've seen 80 hold out. So while you know from a trading point of view, you, you might attend a uh, uh, one-two day kind of short, but I think around 80, 78, you will see the stock, uh, you know, see a lot of buying and short covering. So my sense is that there might not be big downsides happening over here compared to Aisha, which still suggests 16,500 as my medium term target could be tested. Okay, okay fair point. Uh, uh, Sudarshan, good morning. Uh, uh, you have a bunch of buys and sells. In fact, three buys and two sells. Yeah, and as you uh, sometimes tell me, it's the standard template now. That's because that's what the market is doing. It's mostly mid-cap, Sanuj. Uh, DV's lab is a buying opportunity. It's uh, go going through a trading range after a minor rally, and that rally can break on the upside. It's worth buying into. IGL is a buy after many months of declines. That stock is also suggesting that some kind of an accumulation is going on there. You know, even that view is coming in the nifty. So we'll see whether all of them work out or not. But as of now, IGL is a buy. And Maruti, where there is no accumulation, where we are only assuming that a short-term low has been made, hopefully, that's a buying opportunity. We are really buying at the lowest, if possible. There are two short sales. There are always intraday IDFC, First Bank, and Escorts. Okay. Mm -hmm. What right. about uh, your stocks, Ashwini? I mean, what would be on your list? See, the banking sector is weak, and it's... Uh, probably broken down uh, from you know key support so my sense would be that uh, Canra Bank is a sell with a stop of 279 target of 264 ICICI Bank is a sell with a stop of 427 target of 410 BOI is a sell with a stop of 86 target of 78 Equitas is a buy with a stop of 118 target of 126 and Havel is a buy with a stop of 714, target of 732. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, we are, of course, going to come back to you for more trading ideas. Thank you very much for the moment for giving us the trading strategies on key stocks and indices. Uh, with that, let's uh, turn back to the macros, the point that we introduced when we started Bazaar today. This telltale slowdown signs coming. First, we saw it in the wholesale price index, where every manufactured item was priced lower than it was uh, in the month of May. And then we got uh, from the Commerce Ministry late yesterday, the import-export data, which showed a 10% fall in imports and a 9% fall in exports. Uh, uh, to to decode these numbers and tell us how painful or how not so painful they are. We have Abhishek Upadhyay, Senior Economist, ICICI Securities Primary Dealership, mm -hmm. and Sharath Kumar Saraf, the President of the FIO, Federation of Indian Export Organizations. Gentlemen, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, first to you, Abhishek, uh, uh, is the slowdown looking like it is mature or is it looking like we've just begun? So, hi, morning, Lata. So, uh, you mentioned the trade numbers. Uh, there are signs that uh, growth was weaker uh, last month. Uh, the decline in both imports and exports was, was perhaps, you know, more than anticipated. Uh, if, if I'm looking at imports, uh, you know, even core imports, which are typically less volatile than headline imports, you know, fell 9%. So, core imports. So, th so, so, so that is a core import. So non-oil, non-gold imports. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so that is a sign uh, that growth was weaker. Mm -hmm. That said, you know, uh, there are a couple of offsets. Firstly, uh, you know, if you're looking at, for instance, on the export side, 
almost 100% of the sequential fall between May and June, and, and it is quite sharp at about 5 billion, was on account of uh, weaker uh, gold and uh, weaker oil exports. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, so there is a role of commodity prices there. Uh, and even in case of imports, uh, while you know certain segments such as machinery, which are again you know less sensitive to price variations, are weaker. Uh, weaker gold and oil imports are about 70% of the sequential fall. Mm. So there is some offset, uh, but uh, cannot dispute that uh, there are signs of growth weakness weakness in these trade numbers. Okay, okay but uh, yeah. you know, uh, Abhishek, even the fall in crude, uh, I mean crude derivatives, where we specialize in exports, even that could be a victim of slowdown, isn't it, and not just prices? Well, well, that is true. So, uh, if you are looking at, you know, global trends, for instance, uh, you know, the, the exports which have suffered the most over the last, you know, three, four months are basically technology exports. So, if you're looking at, you know, countries such as Korea, their exports have been down 8-9% over the last couple of months, right? It is the commodity exports which have been hit less. So, you know, if these are signs that even, uh, you know, the latest numbers are signs that even commodity exports are, you know, starting to get hit, mm. uh, there is there is worry for, for EMs, mm. you know, which, which depend mm. most on, you know, uh, this segment for, for driving growth. Okay. Uh, well, we also have Mr. Sharad Kumar Saraf, the president of the FIEO, who joins in. Mr. Saraf, what's your best guess? Uh, do you think the data could worsen over the next few months? And what is the need of the hour? I mean, what are the domestic issues that need to be addressed for things to improve? Uh, good morning, Lata. I am not very pessimistic. I think the data would not get worsen. At best, it will remain where it is. But I can. Uh, I think we have reached the bottom of the... Tough, um, at the moment, but um, the issue at the moment is, you know, st both steel prices and crude prices are going down. Mm -hmm. So the prices are going down. Last year we clocked 34% reduction in uh, steel export. So that c continues. So this is one reason why it has. Um, we are seeing a larger decline. The other is, you know, the global conditions uh, have really gone from bad to worse because of the. Um, the tariff wars between U.S. and China, and, and um, India is also getting embroiled into it. So, uh, what are your members telling you? Why are they uh, uh, not able to export? We, we are not able to export because of lack of credit. You see, the GST refunds are not coming. Mm. We need quick refund for the GST, which is now a very large amount so of it's money. It's not a slowdown issue. It's not as if your markets are your destination markets are, uh, you know, not buying as much. Is that not a reason? No, no, market. Not buying as much. Mr. Saraf, we'll actually come back to you. I think we have you on a scratchy line. But Abhishek, I wanted your thoughts on this. He talks about how it's more so, you know, the refund of GST has not co been coming through quick enough. I mean, that's been the rant of the industry for a while. And also this credit unavailability. Your own thoughts? Well, I would, I would think the problem is more fundamental than technical. Uh, I think there are clearer worries about global growth slowdown. Uh, yes, there are pockets, you know, uh, in DMs such as in US where growth is still resilient, but broadly, more generally, you know, uh, growth has been weaker uh, in other parts of the world. And you see that in, you know, weaker exports more broadly over the last, you know, uh, four or five months. India, in fact, has been an outperformer in terms of its, you know, export growth over these months. Okay. So I would, I would, yeah. Mm. No, uh, sorry. I wanted to, uh, uh, you know, uh, veer the discussion towards what can be done. Yesterday in the WPI numbers, wholesale price index numbers, at, in the manufactured uh, segment, just o almost all the products have shown lower prices in June over May. I mean, textiles, uh, uh, wood products, leather, paper, chemicals, rubber, non-metallic mineral, uh, uh, cement, basic metals, finished steel. I mean, everything is priced lower. Uh, so, I mean, that looks like, like a little worrisome. Therefore, what are you expecting? That things get worse before they get better? No, I agree. So, uh, you know, not just core WPI. Core WPI is still affected by, you know, global commodity prices. And if you're looking at... For instance, CR, CRY metal index, mm. uh, which is an hint of, which, which gives you an indication of how far commodity prices have declined, they are down about 22 percent, you know, same compared to same period last year. So that has a, you okay. know, impact on WPI. Okay. But even core CPI has been softer, right? So, so there are signs that you know output gap has has widened on account of you know uh, growth slowdown that we have seen since the second half of last fiscal, and that is seen more 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 broadly. The really the real question is, you know, how 
sustainable as this or and should we see a recovery in second half mm-hmm. uh, i'm still cautious, cautiously optimistic uh, you know on 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 that prospect uh, if you it is interesting that you know over last 3 years in fact each of last 3 years uh, the growth variation between first half of the year and second half of the year has been to the you know 1.4 percentage points okay so uh, even if you are talking about you know 6 uh, to 6 half gdp mm-hmm. Uh, in the first half and I, my sense is the next quarter gdp number will be closer to 6 mm. because you know uh, in the in the q4 numbers that we got at 5.8 government spending was still still strong at 13% okay. mm. government spending would have slowed significantly in the first mm. quarter Uh, so, and KPI's growth won't have revived. So, so Abhishek, uh, uh, looking at all this, both trade data, inflation data, GDP data, what is your uh, forecast for August seventh uh, policy, and uh, for the remainder of 2019 in terms of interest rates? Well, let us say the bar for an August rate cut is quite low. Uh, in fact, uh, it is interesting that you know some members of MPC were, you know, calling for fiscal stimulus in the last minutes. Uh, of course fiscal optics haven't worsened and you know that lowers the bar for you know rate move you know from their perspective uh, inflation overall headline inflation is a little higher than you know uh, what what rbi predicted uh, last month uh, but uh, at 3.1% versus 3% it is well within the reasonable uh, bounds core inflation is weaker uh, so uh, august looks 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 clearly very likely in the bag uh, uh what is uh, we don't want to rule out you know probability of one more especially if our, if inflation is to evolve in line with rbi projections uh, the most dovish member of mpc is talking about a 1.5% real rate right now and if you superimpose that on 3% 3.7% uh, forecast of rbi for the jan march quarter then you are looking at you know five quarter our own forecasts are a little higher and therefore we are a little wary of penciling in you know uh, okay. that so rate so no cut. question of a 35 or a 50 rate cut on august 7th well that will be a surprise so okay. you know uh, while it was while these cuts were mentioned in couple of meetings uh, in the last meeting there was no no okay. talk about it Fair. and i believe you know there has to be sufficient communication from rbi before you know uh, such cuts are you know considered okay. Okay. Uh, reasonable okay uh, i think we have mr sharad kumar back with us on the line uh, mr kumar you were telling us about how the two key issues are access to credit as well as uh, you know no gst refund um, what else is the issue at the moment and what needs to be done now the strengthening of rupee you know with uh, uh, our rupee our currency is strengthening uh, while the competing countries uh, currencies have been depreciating our rupee is strengthened by almost 9% in the same period chinese currency depreciated by about 7% that gap is widening and it's not only chinese it's also bangladesh and uh, uh, vietnam where a lot of competition is coming so uh, the strengthening of rupee is affecting the next is uh, you know this um, steel and uh, crude oil prices which have been going down so we have a very large uh, impact of crude oil this uh, uh, oil ex petroleum and oil export so that those prices are going down uh, resulting in um, a fall in exports the base rate the basis on which uh, we are considering june to 2018 uh, was actually very much on higher side we had clocked a growth of 17% in june 2018 so you know we are comparing now with a very high benchmark if we compare it with um, uh, june 17 hmm. uh, it's uh, we are really not so bad but issue is we are still passing through very challenging times yeah. very very challenging times and we request uh, for government proactive support okay. and what kind of support government can give one is the credit mm. you know loosen up the purse strings little bit to for mm. the exporters okay. when you have the requirement of immediate uh, credit it. there should be some mechanism uh, for not to delay the distribution of credit sure. the second is refund of gst it's a major issue now mm. for small small errors the refund gets uh, delayed beyond all limits okay. this this has to be addressed the mm. interest uh, rate equalization scheme mm. that has to be put across all products okay. at the moment it is only on the selective product yeah. i believe that um, commerce ministry is already thinking on okay. these lines but you see the thinking process has to be faster <laughs> yeah. if we have to arrest this uh, okay. decline mr saraf we are out of time sir thank you very much for your bunch of uh, uh, you know points that can spur up uh, exports but we are discussing of course a broader uh, m- problem which you point out you know currency strengthening also today we have a report from pimco speaking mm. about currency wars 
as a likelihood. So things could get bad on that side, but let's wait and see. Thank you very much, Abhishek and Mr. Saraf for joining us. Uh, so, well, driving home the slowdown point. Okay, well, uh, it's not something but that we don't very know. very pessimistic. They, Both in fact, mm. said that things could pick up from here on. I mean, second the half. first word that uh, Mr. Sharad Kumar said is, I'm not pessimistic. Mm. Things could pick up uh, in the second half. All right, we'll take that discussion forward. Uh, in just a short while from now, some long-term stock ideas and stock bets with Prakash Divan.